Lord, open our hearts and minds for the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may hear your word with joy. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Kwan Loi and Shi, for leading us in a time of uh, worship. Good morning, church. Morning. Uh, you might be surprised why uh, the pastors are dressed down today, um, but many of you will know that this happens once a year. Once a year, the pastors would dress down on a particular Sunday. Uh, when I say dress down, I mean uh, me and Pastor Tzu Hui dress down. La. But if you have seen Pastor Ming, you will realize that she actually dressed up today because she looks very nice in, in what she's wearing. Right? And we do so because today is Laity Sunday. Once a year in our church calendar, we celebrate what we call Laity Sunday. We celebrate the collaboration in ministry between pastors, between clergy and laity. And you'll know this, right? Because a few weeks ago, we had dedicated our LCC leaders, right? These are all uh, our church members who are working full-time outside, but yet at the same time serving full-time in church as well, in a sense, you know, giving of the time, really, to serve the Lord and to serve the church. And so we are thankful for the laity, and the laity plays a very important part in the Methodist church, in the leadership of the church. And so today, we are glad that we are celebrating Laity Sunday, and we have a guest preacher. And our guest preacher is not unfamiliar to us, because he has been coming regularly for our church anniversary celebrations, and uh, he is, in fact, our track lay leader. Topayo Methodist Church is one of the 21 churches in this group of churches called Trinity Annual Conference. Uh, and Trinity Annual Conference is the conference that oversees 21 churches. And our speaker for today, Mr. Henry Tan, is the track lay leader. Just like how our church lay leader is Mr. Kenneth Yeo, Mr. Henry Tan is that level at track, the lay leader of uh, track of 21 churches. And just as Kenneth is our lay leader, representing, in a sense, the chief representative of all the church members of the lay in the church. Therefore, uh, our speaker, track lay leader, is the chief representative of all the 21 churches, lay uh, people, uh, church members of the 21 churches. And so he is therefore coming to speak to us about how all together, us in the church, whether clergy or lay, we have got diverse giftings, diverse talents, but yet at the same time, God has united us as one in ministry unto Him and unto the world as well. He's married to Gyok Ching and they have two grown-up children. Uh, and his accountant, he's an accountant by training, uh, runs his own accountancy firm, but yet at the same time, he serves both fully in the accountancy firm as well as fully in church as well. And so we are glad that he will come today and share with us diversity and unity in the church. Mr. Henry, please. Thank you, Pastor Ben and the leaders of Topayo Methodist Church for inviting me for this uh, Laity Sunday. As uh, Pastor Ben has said that uh, I serve currently as the track lay leader, which uh, we have actually a board of laity where all the lay leaders of all the 21 local churches, we meet and then every year one of the biggest topics to discuss is what shall be the theme for the Laity Sunday? And usually we pray about it and we uh, try to sense what God is talking to us. And I think this particular topic is so important, Universe, unity in, and diversity. As we know, the world is now in a lot of chaos. People are disagreeing with one another and everything sort of is in a mess. But we know that the church needs to be different. The church needs to be united. And the church, while diversified, is united. Before we dive into the passage, let me just share a story. I mean, it's a story, so I cannot verify whether the story is true, but I thought it's so relevant and God seems to have placed that in my heart to start that story. While a man was polishing his new car, his four-year-old son picked up a stone and scratched lines on the car on the other side of the car. In anger, the man took the child's hand and hit it many times, not realizing he was using a wrench. At the hospital, 
the child lost all his fingers due to multiple fractures. When the child saw his father with painful eyes, he asked, Dad, when will my fingers grow back? The man was so hurt and speechless, he went back to his car and kicked it a lot of times. Devastated by his own actions and sitting in front of the car, he looked at the scratches that is on the other side of the car. The child had written, I love you, Dad. To me, this story tells me that when we are angry and when we are holding on to our own perspective or what may have happened or our own interpretations of a matter, we will do something that we will regret for life. I believe that this is so true in any conflicts and disunity situations. Many of us hold on to our own versions or what we see with our own eyes, or our versions of what we think is true, and proceed to take certain actions. Usually, without getting to the other side to see what others are really thinking. I hope at the end of the time of studying His Word today, we may get His message of how not to commit the same mistake as the father of this story. Let us pray before we start. Father Lord, be with us as we listen to your word and that each of the words that is spoken be from you so that it may apply to our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The passage given to us is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 11 to 31 where the Apostle Paul presents a rich metaphor of the church as the body of Christ. Through this passage, Paul addresses the diverse gifts within the church and emphasizes the importance of unity. So as we explore this, we'll focus on three key points represented by three S. The source of our gifts, the first S, source, the significance of each member within that body, and the shout-out to mutual care among the members. And we'll be reading the passage by section. So let's start with the first one. The source of our gifts, verses 11 to 31. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as he determines. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free, and we are all given the one Spirit to drink. So in these verses, Paul emphasised that the Holy Spirit is the source of all spiritual gifts. As he writes that all these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. What we also know is there are diversity of gifts. Just like all of us seated here, we all have diversity of gifts. And Paul, in earlier verses, did list various gifts. For example, wisdom knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment, tongues and interpretations. And each gift is unique, showing God's creativity and intentionality. What we need to know is that each of us are made different by God. So there is unity in the Spirit because it comes from the same source. And although our gifts are diverse, they come from this same source, this highlights that our unity isn't found in uniformity, but in being connected to the same source. Just as our physical body has various parts with distinct functions, the church too comprises individuals equipped for specific roles. That's why I think we are here. You know, we have the worship leader, have a certain gifts, the uh, choir, the the people who can sing well with that gifts 
of worshipping, they are all here, and all of us serve in different parts of the church. This also reminds us of the triune God, where the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are three persons and serve different purposes. They are one and are in agreement. So if we look at uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 to 8, in the NIV version, it says, For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. And in the New King James Version, it says, For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water and the blood, and these three agree as one. After looking at this first S, which is a source of our gifts, let us look at the second S, the significance of each member of this body, and that will be from verses 14 to 20. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. So it is the same here. If imagine all of us only have the gifts of singing, perhaps and this service would be all you know, in, in the red, you know, there's nobody else, and then just having worship and worship. I mean, it's not wrong, but you know, it's different, right? But because we have all different gifts, different parts of the body functions differently and serves differently, and making this diversity such richness. So Paul compares a church to a human body, emphasizing that each member, no matter how seemingly insignificant, plays a crucial role. Therefore, we need to value every member. And Paul states, If the foot should say, Because I'm not a hand, I do not belong a body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. You can't make that decision. Every member is essential, and dismissing our gifts devalues our contribution to the whole church. Whether we like it or not, we are connected as one body, just as the hand is connected to the foot as part of that same body. It is not just only valuing every member, but we are also interdependent. Our body cannot function effectively if any part does not fulfil its role. Paul underscores that each part matters, illustrating that in the body of Christ, we are mutually dependent. When one member suffers, all suffer. And when one rejoices, all rejoices. As we value every member and know that we are interdependent, we are to show encouragement. And this message is particularly encouraging for those who may feel overlooked or inadequate. God fashioned each of us with purpose. Your role, my role, no matter how small it may seem, is vital to the church health and mission. So we have looked at the source of our gift, which is actually from the same source, right? And then we also looked at the significance of every member of the body. They are all equally important, and we come from that same source. So the last point is to look at the shout-out to mutual care. Sorry, I don't know why there's a <laughs> part there. So I think you can still read. So that's from verses 21 to 31. 
The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honourable, we treat with special honour. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. And if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, and gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now, eagerly desire the greatest gift, the greater gifts. So in these closing verses, Paul turns the focus towards mutual care and support among the members of the body. Mutual dependence, as I mentioned earlier, Paul asserts that no part of the body can say to another, I don't need you. We are interlinked. Thus, we must cultivate a spirit of humility and service, recognising that we are better together. Not only do we have mutual dependence, we are to act in love. The command to care for one another strongly echoes teaching, uh, Jesus' teaching on love. As members of Christ's body, we are called to serve, uplift and support one another in both our strengths and weaknesses. Love acts as a glue that keeps the body unified. Besides having mutual dependence, acting in love, we are also to live out our calling. Paul ultimately encourages us to live out our calling with the gifts God has given us, fostering a spirit of communal care. A strong, vibrant church thrives only when its members embody love and support in tangible ways. This passage written by Paul reminded us of the cause of the gift, the significance of every member and the shout out for mutual care in the body. So these discipleship lessons can be easily remembered by three S. Source, significance, and shout out. And all these three S then relates to the gifts, to relates to every member, and to relates to care. Having understand these discipleship lessons, we may be asking in our mind this question, so what's next? Yes, we know that you know, the source of gifts come from one, the significance of every member, and then we also shout out for mutual care, but what's next? How do we apply? And where do we apply? While Paul talks mainly about the church, I think it's applicable in many parts of our life too. And let's just try to apply this to different spheres of our life. So first, in our family. Many of us know that God has put our family together. And we also know that even though we are in the same family, with the husband and wife joined as one by God in the centre, and the children who are born in the same environment, but all of us may be all very different from one another. In fact, we hear of many families having an estranged relationship, either between husband and wife, or between parents and children, or between siblings. Applying the discipleship lessons above, let's try to remind ourselves that all in the family have different gifts, and hence, we think and behave differently. Every member of that family is created by the same source from God. While some of the families may be weaker, 
Some may be more difficult. We are to honour and respect every member of the family and treat each as significant and show them so. Whilst relationship may be estranged and while distance may cause closeness to dim over time, it is a reminder and a shout out for us to remember to care for one another in the family. We can care for one another by sending a gift, a message, or if relationship is estranged, we can simply say a prayer for that person quietly whenever we think of him or her. It is our mission to care for them. Besides applying these discipleship lessons in our family, we can also apply them in our workplace. You know, this picture is quite interesting. It says, Gary here is a brains of the operation. Emily is a heart of the company. Louis is, I don't know, the appendix. Not strictly necessary, but it's just easier not to get rid of him. That's just a joke for him. But sometimes we do feel some of the members in the workplace is like that, right? Many of us know of office politics and how employees feel miserable working in an environment or a particular organisation or working with a particular supervisor. How often we say, we wish if only Mr A understands me and be more supportive of my work. Or we wish if only Mr B cared to say something clearer so that we know what to do and not have to second guess. Or we wish if only Mr C takes up his role better so that I don't have to carry his load at work. Friends, are this true in your case too as you are in the workplace? Would it help if we start thinking that Mr A, Mr B or Mr C are differently made by God and the source of their many gifts are also from God? Would it help also for us to treasure every member of the organisation, our superior, our bosses, our associates, no matter how different they are, and know that God considers them significant? Would it help that God has shout us to us to care for these persons who were sent in our way? It could that the difficult supervisor or that associate who is a pain, they are specially sent to us, and it is our mission to care for them. Besides applying these discipleship lessons in family, in workplace, we certainly can apply this in our church, in Topayo Methodist Church, or in the greater body of Christ. Do we sometimes find ourselves or often find ourselves disagreeing with one another, whether openly or quietly in our hearts. Over theological matters, over ministry matters, over difference in opinions of how things should be handled, and many, many more. The really sad thing is that many of the differences are by God's loving brothers and sisters who are truly seeking God and truly feel that God has asked them to do what they are doing to the extent of sometimes hurting one another. Would it help if we start thinking about the person who we disagree with are differently made by God and the source of such different gifts are from God? Would it help also to treasure every member of the church and treasure everything that they are saying and know that God consider them significant. Would it help that God has shouted us to us to care for these brothers and sisters in Christ in our church, and that they have indeed been sent to our way? And can we make it our mission to care for them? Time is running out, and I would like to conclude soon. We have heard the story of what mistake we can make if we only look at things from our own perspectives and not from the other side. 
we have also three discipleship lessons to know that the source of gifts is from the one and the same Spirit and the significance of every member of the body and also that mission and shout out to us to have mutual care for one another. And we have also listened to how we could apply it in our family, the workplace and our church. And in fact, in every, any environment that we are placed. However, it is very important for us to know two key truths so that we can't simply apply these discipleship lessons purely on our own strength. It is definitely difficult for us, as we mentioned, you know, to care for one that we disagree with, for an estranged family members that we feel have uh, betrayed us. By our own strength, we can't do that. So there is two key truths that we need to know. Truth number one, God has saved us. God saved you, God saved me, God saved the world. And second, our hope is in the Lord. If we try with our own strength and things still doesn't change or improve, we know that we are to surrender this to God in God's timing. Things will improve. You may ask, how are we to link these two key truths to what we are discussing here in unity and diversity in the body? Let me just share a personal testimony of my own um, reflection of these two truths that I've experienced and perhaps you would be able to understand also in your own life. So this is a picture of an uh, accident and the one that uh, uh, the car that I'm driving is actually the one uh, in the black car. You know, I was actually having a holiday in uh, Portugal, driving along this cobblestone uh, road with my wife. Um, of course, um, it's uh, Europe, so it's left-hand drive. Um, and uh, we were driving down this road, and quite slowly we moved, but uh, we reached a junction. I didn't really come to a complete stop, but I slowed down. And suddenly, I could see an object coming from my left. Um, and next, I sort of saw something that blocked this object. And the next thing I look on my right is the car that has flew all the way to the other side. You could see from that picture, in you know, the top picture, you know, at a far distance, the silver color. And then the bottom picture shows you the damage that that other car has experienced. After the shock, you know, we stepped out of the car and we looked around and made sure that everybody is safe. And I walked around the car on the side and I, we looked at the car tracks, the tyre track mark. And I could see the tyre track mark of the other car coming di directly in that direction, just next to my seat. So if... God has not saved me from that situation. And I believe that it was the hand of God that has moved that car that flew past. Because at that kind of speed, it couldn't have stopped. But for some reason, God has saved me. And I was thinking and praying, you know, why have you saved me from this? In fact, along the way, before we reached that junction, we saw rainbow. And the rainbow is obviously a reminder of God's covenant. And we're saying, then why do we meet into this accident? But God reminded me, I saved you for a reason. I saved you so that your time on earth has not yet ended. And I saved you because I want you to worship me, I want you to revere me, and I want you to serve me. So friends, I share that with you. I don't know whether you have any near-death accident or whatever. But the fact that you are alive today, it is for a purpose. It is to worship Him. It is to revere Him. It is to serve Him. 
And just remember that and all this disunity or this disagreement or this estranged relationships is not important. So whoever that may have hurt us, that we treat them like enemy, but God has shown us that our very purpose in this world is only to worship Him, to revere Him, and to serve Him. All other things are not important. Let's pray. Father Lord, thank you so much for your reminder to us of how we need to learn to look at the other side, to look at something that others are looking that we may not know the perspective. We also need to know that in unity and diversity that we are all from one source of gift. And we are indeed significant for every member of the church or every member of the household or every member of the workplace are equally important. No one is below one another. And we have a mission to mutually care for one another. Knowing that it is our mission that we are alive today and we are preserved and safe so that we can continue to worship you, continue to revere you, and continue to serve you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.